it's that time of year again. Christmas is right around the corner and you're still not done buying all the gifts for your dear ones. And as usual, there is that specific person who you can't really find anything for. I'm talking about that friend or relative who's passionate about photography but could really use some confidence booster. And let's see if I can help you with that. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, all about how photography can help with mental health. In today's video, I would like to suggest some ideas that you might take inspiration from to complete the purchase of your Christmas gifts. Gifts are something that people wouldn't normally buy for themselves, right? It's something that's either too fancy or too expensive, or they just can't justify the purchase because it doesn't really respond to a specific need. I believe that gifts are not supposed to be just some dust catchers sitting on a shelf, but they need to be useful. The list that I'm presenting in this video is targeting a very specific group, which is those photographers who are in need of some motivation or confidence boost. And how can you provide this boost? Well, I put together a list of 10 items that I think are going to be helping when it comes to showing people that you believe in them and their abilities as photographers and that can remove barriers so that the process to go out and shoot is going to be much easier for them. The main goal of this video is not to sell specific products. I think that there's way too many videos out there on YouTube that you can browse for and get an idea of this item for this budget range. What I'm trying to achieve here is to give some inspiration when it comes to provide encouragement for your dear ones. I will leave in the description links to what I use for myself just to provide the starting point for your research, but I think that the brand and model are not relevant in this case. It's something that you can adjust and find based on your preferences, the place where you live and what delivers to your home and the price range that you're looking at. With that said, let's start browsing through the list. In my opinion, one of the most important things for a photographer is online presence. So having that spot in the internet where they can showcase their work and build a portfolio that they can share. And if you are lacking confidence in what you do, it's not something that you would necessarily start looking into yourself. So my first idea to kick off this gift list is a subscription to a website hosting or domain to start building this online presence. Of course, this is something that needs to be renewed on a yearly basis, but I think that it's interesting to at least give it a try for one year and then if your photographer friend will find value in having the online portfolio, then they will probably keep renewing out of their own pocket. Or maybe you can decide to gift it again next year and just continue a sort of tradition. I believe that this is a type of gift that will really show how much you're valuing their work because you're vouching for their presence online. And it's gonna provide a lot of confidence to them and also improve the self-esteem and receive some indirect positive feedback on their work. Next on the list is a notebook. I use notebooks a lot, both in physical and digital form when it comes to photography. Every time that I watch a documentary or browse Instagram or watch videos, and I see something that I really like and I would like to take a picture of, I write it down in a bucket list. I find this very useful because it allows me to identify the destination for my next trip. If I see that most of my bucket shots are in France, then this is where I'm gonna be traveling next, most likely. On top of that, I also used to write down uh, what I'm feeling during a specific shot or a trip. And this is a sort of recording of positive experiences that I can just go back and read and re-experience every time I want or need. Mm -hmm. 
One more thing aiming at recording positive memories and experiences is an instant camera. Whether it is a full camera or just a small printer that you can connect to your phone, this will allow you to turn your memories and happy moments into something tangible that you can either keep for yourself in your wallet or on the desk or share with whoever you're leaving that moment with. All of the pictures hanging on my apartment walls are pictures that I took and seeing them there printed in large format it gives me a big confidence boost because it's almost a validation of the quality of my work and I know it's a bit cheating because I picked them and decided to print them but if this works for me with my own shots um, after a decision that I took can you imagine how big of a motivation can be for someone to receive a print of something that they took a picture of? Since it's winter and at least in this side of the world it tends to be fairly cold, my next suggestion would be gloves thought for photographers. This specific model is from a brand called Valeret and what I like about them is that there are magnets that you can connect and the fingers stick out. This allows me to operate the camera even when it's very cold. These gloves are not the warmest that you can find, but I hate fidgeting with full gloves on and having the possibility of keeping out at least the fingertips is better than nothing. Of course, you don't have to go for something as specific as this. You can simply go for those mittens that fold up and leave out the whole of the hand. Whichever model you decide to pick, it's gonna be a much better improvement compared to either full gloves or no gloves whatsoever. And it will remove a layer of friction, allowing people to take pictures more easily without having to fidget too much with removing their gloves. Next in line, still under the bucket of friction removal, is accessories to shoot with the smartphone. I think it's safe to say that almost everyone has a smartphone these days, and it's something that you always carry with you, so it's easy to just take pictures with it. So removing friction between the moment that you identify something you would like to take a picture of and you taking the phone out of your pocket will result in a much higher number of pictures taken. I adopted the whole Peak Design ecosystem, so I have a phone cover with an attachment that is compatible to the different mount tabs that they have, and this allows me to be much more flexible when it comes to attach the phone to either the strap of my backpack or a tripod or the dashboard of my car. And I think that a set of accessories for smartphone shooting will really send a message that there is no more excuses not to shoot. Next in line is a film camera. Again, it doesn't need to be a specific model. There are so many options in secondhand shops or grandma's attic. The whole point of a film camera is the idea of shooting with film and the actions that it requires. The fact that you have to load the film yourself and everything is manual and you're basically gifting a zen exercise, not just a tool to take pictures. Another priceless gift is inspiration. If you know the taste and likes of the person you're getting the gift for, I think that a photography book could be a great idea. Even if the person receiving the book doesn't know the author of the book, it doesn't mean that they will not be appreciated. And I believe that photography books are always a great source for inspiration. Even though you don't know specifically what authors they like, you can simply think of the type of photography that they prefer to shoot. Is it landscape photography or cityscapes or wildlife? This will give you an idea of what they might enjoy and shrink down the pool of photographers to pick from. Another item that is looking at removing barriers and friction is a mini tripod, which can be used both with the phone and with the camera. 
There are certain shots that are very difficult to take if you don't have a tripod or something to stabilize the camera on. And having something that is tiny and lightweight and easy to carry with you every time that you're carrying the camera will give you that extra help when you're identifying those situations. I'm thinking, for instance, of shots with water or when the light is not enough or sunset and every time that you want to go for a long exposure, generally speaking. And now let's think out of the box. There is a card deck that is called Oblique Strategies and has been ideated for artists. Every car contains an artistic challenge to complete and, as you will see, they're very cumbersome and open for interpretation. The whole point is to develop lateral thinking and just think outside of the box. With this exercise you will come up with shots that are unique to you and your specific interpretation of what the card says. So, this was my list. I'm very curious to know if you were having more or less the same ideas or thinking of something completely different. In which case, let me know in the comments. It's all for today's video, I'll see you around next time, bye!